Okay, the problem I had with the game I was making has now been solved. There was no person who uploaded it in video form, which is unfortunate, but because they put the answer in the comments, anybody could have just seen it and made a video and then just said, oh, I won. So there's two people that did it, and the reason why there's two is that I forgot to cut it off after the first person. I basically was asleep when the two comments happened, although they're sort of far apart, I'm, I'm just still going to allow them both to to win, I guess. Um, the first person is Plants at J. He was the first to respond. Um, and the second was uh, Light of the Future 7. So just to show you the solution first before I show you the camera controls. Here's the solution. So right now, when my camera is orientated down, I'm going to walk in the right fashion. And when it's orientated as it is now, I'm going to walk inverted to that. So I don't want that to happen. But here is the answer. Well, up and down, and my left and right from my left joystick are going into these directional splitters. Now the output of my directional splitters are going into a directional combiner, but I'm inverting the way the connections are made to both the, the splitter and the combiner. So the positive of my splitter is going to go into the negative of my combiner, and the negative of my splitter is going to go into the positive of my combiner. And what that does is essentially in, um, flips the analog signal that you're sending from the uh, the joystick. So uh, that was a really smart idea. I hadn't thought of that. And what I've done from there is, let's say the output of my splitter and combiner is the up and down. I sent that to the the up input of the joystick rotator and the up input of the advanced mover. Vice versa, I did that for the left and right uh, splitter combiner going into the left and right and the left and right of the joystick rotator. So I'll just show you how that works in action. Well, you can't really see because you can't see the joystick in which direction I'm pointing it. But trust me, it feels a lot better than it did before. <laughs> he, Alright, so yeah, he's walking in the right orientation. All I need to do is recreate those controls four more times for the four independent directions that I want to do. I could do eight independent controls and I'm thinking about that I might do that. All depends on how much heat it takes and as you can see this is barely taking any heat in the level at all right now until you add emitters and all this other fun stuff. So here's the camera controls. Um, the way I have it set up right now is that my right joystick controls the left and right motion of the camera and the, also the uh, L1 and R1 buttons also uh, control the rotation of the camera. The right joystick up and down it controls the zoom, so if I push forward I zoom in one direction, if I push backwards I zoom in the opposite direction. Um, vice versa for the left and right, I also uh, have control over which way I want to send the camera. So here's my left and right joystick from my right joystick going into a splitter. That goes into two OR gates with my L1 and R1 going into those OR gates. Those output of those OR gates go into this combiner, and then it goes into the cycle input of this uh, eight port uh, selector switch. So when I push left, I'm going to go, let's say, positive, and when I push right, I go negative on this combiner, and that chooses which direction the splitter travels up or down, or forwards or backwards, or however you want to say it. Now the reason why I have four, or sorry, eight outputs on the selector is that, well, I only have four cameras, but I actually have eight camera positions. And what I've been doing to, instead of adding eight cameras, I just activate two cameras at once. I find it adds a bit better of a transition. I don't know. I haven't tried it with eight. I just don't want to risk adding more heat. It seems logic is less heaty. Uh, so, just to sort of explain these OR gates, so what they do is they decode, um, not really decode, but they just sort of sort out um, what camera I'm using and then what cameras do I activate de depending on what selector output is activated. So, for example, let's say output 1 is activated, I'm going to just go straight into this OR gate, and this OR gate is going to turn on this camera right here. Uh, it also goes through an AND gate. This is uh, for the zoom feature, which I'll explain in a second, but just ignore the AND gate and think about this OR gate is specifically controlling this camera. Uh, the second OR gate is going to control this right camera right here. 
Uh, so the output 2 of this selector is going to go also into this OR gate and this OR gate right here if you just follow, follow the line on the screen there. So when I go to output 2 of my selector I turn on these two OR gates and then I turn on these two cameras and then these two cameras would activate uh, let's say the camera that would be in the second position. Um, although it doesn't exist we're just turning on two other cameras. Um, and then obviously output 3 just turns on the right camera by itself and then eventually you just rotate around these four cameras in those eight positions. And that's how the camera rotation works. Now for the zoom, uh, here's my up and down on my right joystick going into a splitter, going into an OR gate. I put an OR gate here because I, I don't know, I plan on probably adding another button for zoom in and zoom out. I could probably use the L2 and R2. Um, I haven't figured out when I want to use those for yet. Uh, again, they go into a combiner, into your cycle of a selector switch, so the exact same setup as this selector switch with this combiner and those OR gates. Um, the only difference is, is that I have those three levels of zoom. Those would go into these AND gates, and those basically dictate what AND gates turn on and off. Because these OR gates are also connected to these other AND gates, which are also connected to these cameras in turn. Um, so, I know this was sort of a long video, but, uh, Hopefully you learned something from it. Again, thanks to uh, Blancet J and Light of the Future 7 who showed us how to invert the analog signal on a joystick coming in, which is probably going to be really handy for other people too as well. Anyways, thanks for watching. Bye.